Welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel. I'm Marley Bird, proud national spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns, and this is video two of a three-part series for the Cheerful Cable Slipper Socks. The pattern for these slipper socks is free from redheart.com. I've put a link to the pattern and the materials in the video description box right down there below. By this point, you should have watched video one and completed the cuff and the leg of the sock. Now you're ready to get to the center of the sock, which really is the meat of the sock. And I wanna walk you through each step of the way so you can get through this entire section without any problems. By the end of this video, you will have learned how to do the heel flap, the heel turn, and the gusset. So without further ado, go ahead and grab your homework and let's jump in. Your homework should look a little something like this. You have worked the cuff, you've added the eyelet row, and you've done the 32 rounds of the cable pattern uh, down the leg of your sock. What you need to do now is take a look at your pattern because this next set of instructions are broken up depending on the size you're making. If you remember in video one, I showed you that I went through and highlighted all of the numbers that pertain to the size I'm making. And I'm making the medium size. So those are the instructions I will be following along in this video. The good news is there's nothing completely different whether you're making the small or the large size. Um, all, all you need to do is make sure you learn how to do these stitches that I will be showing you how to do, but following along with the instructions for the size you're making. So let's start up with the or start off with the setup for the heel. Let's go ahead, pick up our work and begin. So round one for the medium size, which is what I'm making, I am supposed to do a knit one and then a knit two together. So I have two stitches right here and I will knit two stitches together. Then I will knit three. Purl two. By now I have to shift needles because this is where the break is for my stitches. And now I need to knit six and then purl two. At this point, you'll see that there is a star in the pattern for my, my size. And that means this is where I need to repeat. So I will knit one, knit two together, and then knit three, and then purl two. I will repeat from star two more times. So I will knit one, knit two together, knit three, purl two, and then repeat that one more time. So I will knit one, knit two together. Whoops, I split that yarn. Knit three, and then purl two. I now have 36 stitches on my needles when I started with 40. If you're making the smaller size, you have 32. If you're making the larger size, you now have 40 stitches. We go ahead and move on to round two, which is a cable round, which is perfect. That's what our sequence is all along. This is exactly where we would have been doing a cable round. So we will start off with our cable, which is knit five to begin with. One, two, three, four, five, purl two. Now I'm going to do a two by two left cable. So I'll grab my cable needle, slip two stitches onto my cable needle, hold to the front, knit two stitches from my left hand needle, place those stitches from my cable needle 
back onto my double point. You could knit directly from your cable needle if you wish. It's not something I really like to do, so I don't do that. And then you'll knit those two stitches you just placed back on the left hand needle. Okay, so that's a two by two left cable. Now I will knit two and then purl two. And now I'm going to knit to the end of the round. I won't do any more cable stitches. I'm just going to knit. So I'm going to knit all of these stitches. Alright, so I've knit all of those stitches and I am finished with the setup for my heel. Let's go ahead and move on to the heel flap. When we work the heel flap, we will be working back and forth in rows. So we will no longer be working in the round. So the first thing we're going to do here is prep our stitches to make sure they're in the correct place. So to begin, I'm going to go ahead, I'm not going to use my fifth needle. This is going to make sense here in a second. I'm going to start off by knitting two stitches. So knit one and knit two. And I was using what was before my needle four and I just knit two stitches. That is row one. I'm going to turn my work now. So I'm going to turn my work, leaving all of those stitches there. And now I'm looking at the wrong side of my fabric. Hey everybody, I'm going to jump in here for a second. I want to let you know that since filming this video, the pattern has been updated and this part of the instructions has changed. Instead of knitting the stitches on this row, you should actually be purling them because we're on the wrong side of the fabric. So when I was working this video originally, I was supposed to knit these stitches, but now you are supposed to purl them so that way you get a nice smooth stockinette stitch fabric on the outside of your actual slipper. If you want to follow along with me and go ahead and knit them so you get that purl ridge, you can absolutely do that. I'll leave that up to you. But I do want to point out where this has changed in the pattern since I filmed this video. Okay. And if I follow the instructions, it says row one, which is the wrong side. We are going to knit across the number of stitches that's written for the size you're making. So for me, I'm going to knit across 20 stitches. This is going to give me a little bump bridge, but that's the way the pattern's written and we're going to go with it. So there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Now, I want to point this out. My fifth needle, I'm going to set it down and I'm going to go ahead and carry on still with the needle that I have in my hand. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. That leaves two stitches on that needle. Just like when we moved stitches over to create our cables, I'm just going to put those two stitches on the needle that's to the left of it, okay? So now all of my stitches are separated onto three needles. In the pattern, Sandy says now that we are supposed to put our instep stitches on a stitch holder. And this is a point where I'm actually gonna disagree. I think it's harder to have those stitches on a stitch holder than to just keep them on my double pointed needle. So I'm gonna leave them in place where they are uh, on the double pointed needles and not use a stitch holder. If you wanna use a stitch holder, you can, but you don't have to. So as I turn my work and I'm looking at the singular needle with my 20 stitches on it, I am going to work in stockinette stitch 
through row 11. So I've done a row one and a row two. So I will be starting row three on my right side here and I will work through row 11 in stockinette. And I'm only going to use these two needles. So this needle that I have all the stitches on and then the needle I'm knitting on too. Let me move this one out of the way. Hopefully it won't be as confusing. So I'm simply going to work in stockinette through row 11. If you're making the larger size, you will work this through row 13. When you get to the end of the row, just like any sort of regular knitting, just turn your work. Completely ignore those stitches that are there and continue on, again, working in stockinette. When you finish your last row, you would go ahead and we would move on to the heel turn or the turning of the heel. This again is a section when the pattern is written out to be divided into small only, medium only, and large only. So make sure you're following along with the size that you're making. Again, I'm making the medium only. So I'm gonna move that back up there and let's go ahead turn our work because row one has us begin on the wrong side and I will start off by purling 11. Then I do a purl two together which is as easy as putting your needle into the two stitches as if to purl and literally purling those together. And then purl one and turn. We are working short rows, so we're gonna leave all of those stitches unworked and I will turn my work. Now I will do a slip one and I will slip one as if to purl. You can choose to slip as if to purl or as if to knit, totally up to you. If you do choose to slip as if to knit, it twists your stitch and you get a little bit of a bump there. So I will leave that up to you. But I slipped one as if to purl, then I will knit three, work an SSK, so I slip one as if to knit, slip one as if to knit, take my left hand needle, put it in the front leg of those two slipped stitches and knit them together. And then I will knit one and turn. So I'm gonna leave all those stitches unworked and turn my needles. Okay, so I'm back to the wrong side. I will slip one as if to purl. Then I will purl four. And I will purl two together. Notice that when I purl two together, it's gonna close this gap. So the designer actually could have written purl to the gap and then purl two together to close the gap. And then you purl one after that and turn. We're to the knit side, slip one as if to purl. I will knit five. Here's my gap again, and I'm gonna do an SSK to close it. Slip one as if to knit, slip one as if to knit, take my left hand needle, put it in the front leg of those two stitches, and knit them together. Knit one past your decrease, and turn. Slip one as if to purl, and then I will purl six. Purl two together, which is gonna close that gap. And then purl one and turn. Slip one as if to purl, knit seven. Here's the gap, I'm gonna do an SSK, so I slip one as if to knit, slip one as if to knit, 
left hand needle into the front leg of those two stitches and knit them together. Knit one and turn. Slip one as if to purl. Purl eight. Purl two together to close that gap. And then purl one and turn. Slip one as if to purl. I will now knit nine. Do an SSK to close that gap. And then knit one. I now have turned the heel and I have 12 stitches remaining. But if you take a look here, you can see what we did have. Let me straighten these out. What we did have, what, blah, 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 blah. what we did have was a nice straight heel flap, but now by working those short rows back and forth, we've created this nice heel turn. And if I set this down like so, you can see that we have now essentially created a pocket for our heel to go into. So this is the top of our foot, this is the side of our foot, and this is the heel. So our heel would sit right into there. I could also position it like so. Let's see here. Can you see that? Like here's your leg, here's, here's the, the heel flap, okay? So now what we need to do is we have to pick up stitches along this heel flap here and then begin incorporating those instep stitches again. So now that we have all of this complete, our goal is to pick up stitches along this edge right here and then work in pattern if you want to across those stitches, pick up stitches along here, and then begin these stitches down here to get us all back in the round again. So here is what we are going to do. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these 12 stitches and I'm gonna divide them up and put six stitches on a different needle. Okay, so now I have them separated out again. Essentially, I want these, the, this needle to have these stitches and this needle to have these stitches. So let's go ahead and jump in. First thing I wanna do is make sure that the right side of my sock is facing me, which it is. And with this needle right here, the last one I have, I want to pick up and knit nine stitches along the side of my heel flap. So when I pick up a knit, I like to just go right into those stitches. Notice I kind of, I go into the right leg of one and the right leg of the other, and I yarn over and I pull through both of those. So I go into the right leg of one, the right leg of the next row, and I pull up a stitch. I don't know if, why, it just seems to work for me. So there's two, let me show you again. I go into the right leg of one, row, right leg of the next, yarn over and pull up. So there's three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, and this one's gonna be a little bit more tricky. Nine, oh, that's split the yarn there. Nine, so I have nine stitches plus my original six. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I've picked up nine stitches along the heel flap. Now that those stitches are all picked up, I would transition to my instep. So it's just like I'm rotating clockwise, just like before. I pick up my fifth needle now. This is when it comes back into play. 
and I would follow along with my pattern to continue the cable stitches. So my pattern for the instep for the size medium says that I need to knit three and then purl two. Then the pattern tells me to work round three of the cable stitch pattern. Well, round three is just knitting six, purling two. So let's do that. So I would go ahead and just like before, knit six. And then purling two. And then I end with my knit three. Okay, so those 16 stitches for me, if I continue on with this, I would continue this cable pattern down the top of the foot. If you wanted to just make all of these stitches knits and make the top of the foot just knitting, you absolutely could do that. I will leave that up to you. Now, as I transition, right, I rotate clockwise, I'm over here to this side of my heel flap and I need to get stitches onto this needle. So now we'll use our fifth needle and we will pick up stitches down our heel flap. So what I like to do is go into each stitch at the end of the row on this side. It's a little bit harder to go in from right side to right side, but essentially you just wanna pick up stitches in such a way, and when I say pick up stitches, you put your needle in and you yarn over your needle and then you pull that yarn over through those stitches or stitch, okay? So there's one. And you just wanna make sure you don't get a big gaping hole. Two, three, four. When you get nine stitches picked up and knit, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, go ahead and knit across those six stitches that we already placed on that other needle. All right, when you get to the end of that needle, I wanna set this down so that we can talk for a second. Here is our lovely sock. This needle and this needle have the uh, top of our foot, the insep stitches, okay? That's those stitches. This needle and this needle has our heel stitches and our gusset. The goal for the gusset decreases is to decrease at this point and this point on these two needles until we get back to the total number of stitches we had before we started our heel flap. So for me, it would be 36 stitches. If you were making the small, it would be 32. If you're making the large, it would be 40, okay? So this is what we're gonna be doing next. We're gonna decrease at the this point here and at this point here every other round until we get back down to the number of stitches we need. I wanna point out one other thing. This point right here, which is the center of the heel, the bottom of your foot, is now the starting point for your round. So when we pick up our needles and work around, when we get to this point again, that will be the end of our round. If you want to grab a stitch marker and place it just like, you know, I don't know, just place it on a stitch right there so that you know whenever you get back to that needle and you see that stitch that's the end of the round, you can do that. It's important that I point that out. Okay, let's continue on in the gusset. You'll notice in the pattern that Sandy wanted us to place a marker at this point and at this point. Well, a marker is just gonna fall off unless I do another marker um, added down here to the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is it, whenever the pattern says to knit to four stitches before the marker, I'm gonna tell you to knit to four stitches before the end of the needle, okay? So we're gonna pick this up and we will knit to four stitches before the end of the needle. When you get to the four stitches um, before the marker or to the end of the needle, you will then knit two together and then knit two stitches. Okay, so that's the end of that needle. You now will go ahead, rotate your work. By working that knit two together and then two stitches after that, you've decreased one stitch on that needle. 
Remember I said we're going to decrease on this needle until these stitches get back to the number we want. Now I rotate my needles, I'm working on the instep here, and I'm going to continue on following the pattern that is already established. So I will knit three and purl two, work round four of my cable pattern, finish off with my knit three. What you're going to notice is when I work my cable pattern, it's just going to be this one row of cable all the way down the top of my foot. As I rotate my work and I am working right here on the other side of my heel flap, I'm on that needle, okay, just so you can get a visual of where I am. Now remember, I did not add a marker, so we are going to treat these instructions as if they're telling us to work these stitches from that particular needle, okay? So in the instructions, this would tell me to slip a marker, which I don't need to because I'm on double points and the marker would fall off. So I'm gonna go ahead and knit two, and now I will do a SSK. So I'll slip one as if to knit, slip one as if to knit, and then knit those two stitches together and then I'll knit to the end of this needle. We have just worked round two of the gusset where round one was us picking up stitches that was round two. Okay, let's go ahead and we continue on. Round three says to go ahead, knit to marker, and then slip marker. So for us, that means we're just gonna knit all of these stitches to the end of this needle. We will rotate. Follow our pattern for our instep. This is round five of my cable pattern, which still is the knit six, purl two. and then finish off with a knit three. In the pattern it says to slip marker and then knit. So we don't have to slip marker, we're simply just going to knit all of the stitches down this needle. That's the end of round three for the gusset. We move on to round four, which is another decrease round. So we will knit to four stitches before the marker, which means four stitches before the end of this row. So we'll knit one, blah, 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 blah. When you get to the four stitches, go ahead and work a knit two together and then knit those last two stitches. Rotate your work. We are on round six of the cable pattern. So for this one, I do have to work cable stitch on my next set. Round six has us start off with our knit two. Then I will slip two stitches, hold those to the back knit two, place those two stitches back onto my left hand needle, and then knit them. Work my purl two, and finish off with my knit three. Now you can see how that continues on that cable pattern down the top of the foot if that's what you've chosen to do. 
At this point, this is where I would slip my marker and I would knit two and I do an SSK to decrease on this needle and then I knit to the end. Pretty easy. At this point, you should be able to follow along with the instructions the way they're written. I did want to make sure that I got through the completion of that cable so you can kind of see how that works. Okay, that's the end of round four. As we move on to round five, it is a plain round, meaning we will go ahead and just knit all the way down to the end of this needle without any shaping. We do the shaping every other round, okay? So when I get to the end of this needle and I rotate around, I will then be on my instep, just like before. And if we just finished with round three of the cable pattern for the inset, then I am, or, or round six, I apologize, then I am on round seven, which is the basic stitch pattern again, because I just did a cable. So this one, I will knit six, purl two, and then knit three. When I get to this needle here, which is the other side of my heel flap, I will simply knit all the stitches. Essentially, round five is just a repeat of round three. And you will repeat round three and four until you have the total number of stitches on your needles that you had before you started your heel flap. The good news is we know that that means you need to do 12 rounds total for a size small, 10 rounds total for a size medium, and 12 rounds total for the size large. That will get us to 32 stitches for the small, 36 stitches for the medium, and 40 stitches for the large. What I want you to do then is go ahead and continue on for the foot of your slipper until it reaches about seven inches, eight inches, or nine inches or at least two inches shorter than the total length you want your slipper to be. Once you've completed all of the heel flap, the heel turn, the gusset, and the foot of your sock, join me for video three to work on the toe of the sock and how to do that finishing touch of the I-cord and the pom-poms. You are, you're almost there, you're on the home stretch. At this point, it's, it's smooth sailing. Just remember on the instep stitches, if you are working in the cable pattern down the top of the foot, make sure you continue that all the way down until you're uh, completed with, until the foot of your sock is complete. <laughs> Jeez, I'm stumbling over all my words. Go ahead, finish your slipper sock and join me back here for the toe. Okay, you're almost to the finish line. You've completed parts one and two. All you need to do now is move on to part three. The video is ready and waiting for you. Make sure you smash that like button because I know you're having a great time making these fantastic slipper socks. Bye guys.